everyone, hope you're all well. Welcome back to our series of building a website with the new Wix Studio Editor. And in this series, we are covering step-by-step -step exactly how to create a website using the new Wix Editor. So in the previous video, we talked about editing the site theme and making sure that we use the correct kind of typography and colors that work with our branding, but also is user-friendly. Um, and also how to do that with the new Wix Studio Editor. In today's video, we are gonna start building the header and talk about some best practices as well. Um, when creating a header for your, for your website. But before we dive in, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss out um, on our latest videos in the series and also other videos that we'll do in the future um, about our latest web development tips and tutorials. So without further ado, let's get started. So we have our website here and we've got the header up here. So if we click into the header section, you can see the header section uh, container being highlighted. And right now the menu is also there as well. We're actually gonna increase our canvas a little bit um, so we can uh, get a bit more space. Um, I've got it at 1500, maybe we'll change it to 1580. Um, and you can see that gets uh, wide as well. We can also reduce the a viewport as well if that makes it easier but we'll keep it at 100 to make sure everything's scaled correctly so we have the header here and we have different sort of uh, options to choose from when it comes to building our header um, we have the hamburger menu um, if you wanted to make a full hamburger menu here um, we're actually going to remove that so that came with the template so we're going to delete that here and what we're going to do is we are going to split this section. So right now it's a completely blank section um, with no columns. We are going to split it into three columns because we're going to have three different sections um, on the website. So we've got two columns here now. And what we're going to do, we're going to add another column uh, cell to the right. And you can see we've got the three cells here. So in the first cell, we're going to keep our logo. So right now we have the stack of um, text and vector art. So we're going to remove that. And we're going to remove that as well and we are going to add a logo image so we're going to click on the image and we're going to drag that um, to the first cell you can see the attach uh, button is coming up meaning that we're going to attach that image to the um, cell we're going to reduce the height of that just to make it a little bit more tidy So we're going to click on the image and we're going to click on create image and we're going to upload media as well and this is where we upload our logo so we've added the background as well and using the section we've selected header and we've created the background as well and we've added the logo and we're just going to make this a little bit smaller so logo is here on the left in the middle we'll have the actual menu and on the right, we'll have our action button. So this will be a separate sort of call to action, um, encouraging users to click on our website and to view our services or contact us, whatever it is the call to action that we want, we're gonna put it as an action button here. So now we're gonna click on the add elements and we are going to add a menu item here. And we're gonna, again, just drag that over to where we want it. So in this case, it's this cell here. And you can see we've got the elements here. So we're just going to make that a little bit wider so it all fits on one line. Um, and then we're going to add all of the columns here as well. So at this point, you want to think about what pages you're going to have on the website. So right now, we've got home about services, project, and contact. However, we are going to remove the contact and have that as the action button. We're also going to remove the projects because we have the services as well. So what we're going to do is click on the drop down and we're going to click on manage pages. So what we're going to do is remove projects altogether. So we're just going to delete. Home about and then we're going to click on manage menu to remove the contact. So we're going to click that and we're going to remove from menu. So this won't delete the contact page. It's just going to remove it from the menu. Um, next thing we're going to do is style this a little bit, so I don't like how thin the writing is, so I'm going to click into that as well, make sure that I'm editing the horizontal menu, and I'm going to look for the uh, design, and you're just looking for um, 
the menu here. And we're going to switch menu container to menu items. And we are looking for the text. So right now it's using paragraph one, which is fine, but we're going to just add that bold. And we're going to reduce the sizing of it slightly. And you can also change things like the color and the hover state as well. So this is in the regular state. In the hover state, it's going to be red. And in the current page state, it's also going to be red as well. We are going to change the typography slightly. Um, we are going to capitalize all of them. Um, and then once it's hover, we will actually change that to white. So we've got the menu looking exactly how we want it and then we just need to add a action button for the contact so we are going to again click on the plus and click and drag the button here and click on attach and just attach that to the third column um, and as you can see we've got this, it's coming up as default styling we're going to change the background to make it stand out a bit more and we are going to change the text as well to make it stand out a bit more as well so instead of start now we're going to click on change text and we're going to call it um, uh, inquire now and we're going to choose a link and we're going to link it to the contact page there's loads of different customization options for you um, as well so not only that you can customize um, the menu items and you can also customize Customize the menu background as well if you were to, if you were to have a drop down, um, and then do all of that as well. If you are ever collaborating on the site um, and you wanted to add a comment to a particular item, um, it's really easy to just click on the item that you want to add a comment to. Um, as well, and you can also stretch out the content as well. But essentially, you just click on comment. And then you can add a comment specifically. So um, change header to non-sticky. And you can see that that now has a comment and anyone who's also working on the site can see that and they can reply to it and they can mark it complete as well. So what's also really cool about um, Wix is that they do have their own pre-designed templates as well. So you can see under navigation, if you go into sections and then click navigations, you can see some pre-designed headers as well. So if you wanted to, if you're struggling with adding a header yourself or the design or the layout, you can click and drag um, a design as well, and then just update that to how you want it. So you can add or edit different sections and you can add, um, different section and headings as well um, so it means that you don't have to start from scratch if you are struggling um, you can always change um, the different sections as well um, but we have the header set up here and we've got the different uh, elements here as well so when it comes to building a header there are some best practices that you want to consider whenever you're designing it first thing that you want to make sure that you do is that you keep it simple and uncluttered. The header is the first thing visitors see when they arrive in your website, so it's important to make a good impression. Avoid overcrowding the header with too many elements, as this can be really overwhelming and distracting. Focus on the most important elements like your logo, navigation, and a call to action. You want to use a clear and readable font. It should be easy to read at a glance, even on small screens, and avoid using stylized fonts that might be difficult to decipher. Include a call to action. So this is the main kind of call to action that you want to do you want to make it stand out against the background and you want to make sure that um, it tells visitors what you want them to do next so this can be anything from signing up to making a purchase so like buy now contact now login things like that 
you want to make sure that the logo that you use is clear and it looks good with the design as well you don't want to make it too big and make it take up too much space but you want to make sure that it's clear and works well with your branding and lastly make it mobile friendly more and more people are using their smartphones and tablets to access the internet so it's important to make sure that your header looks good and functions well on all devices by following these best practices you can design a website header that's both visually appealing and user friendly as well So that's a wrap on our video on creating a header. Um, in our next video, we will create the footer as well. Um, it's really easy with Wix Studio to use a template and then edit the header to how you need it, um, or you can design it from scratch. It's very much drag and drop. Um, so yeah, the footer will be much the same. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the section below and we'll get back to you as well. I um, hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.